So when I think about how GI problems are related to dysautonomia problems, I think about it in two primary ways that I think are useful. Number one, looking at it as the actual neurological component of it. Dysautonomia, obviously a problem with the autonomic system. Well, part of the autonomic system is the component that comes down and controls GI activity, primarily around motility. So like how food gets squished through the intestines, through the chemical interactions, like how we create enzymes, how we break it down, how we use the different chemistry throughout our gut that helps us to be able to actually digest food. And then the third would be immune system that kind of wraps around the entire GI tract. All of those things are influenced by outputs from the brain through the autonomic system. So obviously if we're having a breakdown where autonomic activity becomes overgeneralized, meaning it loses its specificity when I'm trying to activate one part of the autonomic system, multiples get activated. That's on one side, that's like a, like a hyper autonomic scenario. Or we could have a hypo autonomic scenario where we just aren't getting the signal coming through. That could be because the output nuclei don't work as well. But it could also be because the peripheral nerves may be damaged in something like a autonomic neuropathy, right? So that's one way we can think about it. That will cause GI dysfunction, usually decreased motility, decreased absorption rates, problems with constipation, but also diarrhea or alternating between the two. The second way that we want to think about that is not just purely neurological, but actually relative to blood flow. So anything that we do that is going to affect blood flow to the head, we want to think about that as something that can also affect blood flow to the gut. If we're having errors in sending blood flow into the brain, then we're going to have errors in what's called oscillatory blood flow into the gut that can cause both uh, actual luminal wall irritation or changes in, in the, like the stress structure of the wall that makes it a little more permeable, or it can be hypoperfused the same way you have in your brain, where if I'm not getting good perfusion in my brain, I may try to steal some of that blood temporarily from my gut. And if I do that, there's a probability that I'm going to have GI upset, but I'm also going to break down some of the tissues so that the gap junctions in, in the gut lining may not be as robust, which will allow things to leak through that GI tract a little easier. They interact with the immune system more, and we tend toward more sensitivity more problems with not being able to deal with the exposures of a normal GI environment.